Meet Japan's largest earth mover, the Hitachi 5600. <laughs> In today's video, we're at a Japanese quarry that also happens to run a 500 plus ton mining excavator. But before we show you everything about it, how the heck did we get here? Well, last year, an opportunity to visit Japan with Hitachi construction machinery materialized, and I couldn't say no. Oh, look, we're in New York. Oh, just like home. Big Apple. <laughs> If you're unfamiliar with Hitachi construction machinery, they're a global leader in heavy equipment painted in trademark Hitachi orange. HCM makes everything from mini to mining excavators, with its biggest being the EX8000, a few hundred tons bigger than today's machine. Yeah, there you go. I love it. Yeah. We visited three locations, the first two of which were HCM's manufacturing facilities. There, we learned how they build everything from scratch, including the mighty 5600. To say we were impressed is a massive understatement. This was day three, and it was time for some action. We started our day with a two-hour bus ride from Tokyo. Once there, we headed straight to the pit to check out the parked machine. We chose the bucket for our interview backdrop with the quarry owner who said I looked young about 23 times. So they're gonna fire this up, but before they do, we are going to climb up these stairs and check out the operator's cabin. One, two, three, four, six, seven. Twenty-four. We'll try this. I'm in the cabin before they're gonna start it up. This machine is spotless. There's not a speck of dust in here. That's because they put their boots in the little tray I'm standing in right now. I don't wanna get anything dirty. And they put their Hitachi 5600 slippers on to run the machine, slides only. We've got a memory foam seat, a little seat back cushion here for some very comfortable operating. There is not a thing out of place within this cab. It's pretty straightforward, just like any other excavator. We've got our travel pedals there that make the tracks go forward backwards. We've got some camera systems. We've got the uh, operating system of the machine, uh, fuel, etc., on that screen. And then we have our two joysticks for the boom stick bucket swing functions. Uh, and with that, let's fire it up. Hitachi construction machinery and I asked them to go see a customer and they said well we got a quarry customer you can go see I'm like great we'll see a you know an 870 or something maybe a 1200 if we get lucky a 120 ton machine that's a big machine especially for a quarry application they won't have anything bigger than that they have something bigger than that though as you can see travel speed is not the fastest be here a little bit. It takes a little bit of time to move a 500 plus ton machine, but he's now walking it down into the pit to 
start loading the two Hitachi trucks they have right behind me, the 3500. As we wait for the 5600 to walk into the pit, let's explain where we're at. This is the Fujisako Quarry located outside of Sano, Japan. Less than 100 kilometers from Tokyo, the world's biggest city, it and many others in the area feed society's appetite for rock. Everything needs a solid foundation from roads to bridges to buildings, and that's where all this rock ends up, hauled by on-road trucks. The process here is similar to quarries anywhere worldwide. They drill and blast material to loosen everything up before loading and hauling, in this case using the beautiful HCM 5600 and EH 3500 AC trucks. The trucks haul a few hundred tons of rock each to the primary crusher, which feeds safely over 1,000 tons per hour through its enormous cone, pulverizing everything into smaller pieces. From there, it hits secondary crushing in Fujisako's new plant, which separates everything into aggregates of different sizes using screen decks. All right, we're about to get digging, so let's get back to site. trucks here are also beautiful HCM 3500s, which are electric drive trucks. Think of them as really big Priuses. Using a 12-cylinder Cummins engine, they produce 2,000 horsepower, which an onboard generator converts from mechanical to electrical energy. The electrical energy then drives two enormous rear electric motors, which in turn drive the four rear tires. This system results in higher torque and better fuel economy. A few things here. We've got the 5600 loading trucks right below us. These are 3,500 ton trucks. Not 3,500, they're Hitachi 3,500 trucks. I grabbed these brochures yesterday. Why such a big machine? I asked the owner of the quarry this morning when I interviewed him next to the machine that question, and he said it's because it's more efficient. They can use the bigger machine to move more rock, bigger rock, load these bigger trucks, and based on their efficiency and the numbers they run, that's the best way to do it. So a 5600 it is, because why not? That machine is safely over, it's almost a 600 metric ton excavator. The bucket is uh, 22 cubic meters. So within a few passes, that 3500 truck is completely full and off to the crusher.
DIY excavator configuration. Uh, I've only seen 5600s in front shovel configuration, working off of a face in a copper mine in Arizona. This is really nice because it's a lot more flexible in a setting like this. You want the front shovel when you have nice, tidy benches, but in a quarry application, there's a lot of odds and ends that this machine has to dig like this right here. This is not necessarily a high production setting. So this excavator configuration allows them to dig this area a lot more effectively. Now let's dive into some stats. The mighty HCM 5600 weighs 596 US tons or 545 metric tons. Standing at 28 feet or 8.5 meters tall, it is certainly no slouch. Two Cummins QSK50 16-cylinder turbocharged engines provide the machine with 3,000 horsepower more than enough for battle with the toughest rock. Configured as either a front shovel or excavator, it can handle buckets up to 47 cubic yards or 36 cubic meters. Fuel tank, 2,486 gallons or 9,410 liters, similar to my F-250 at home. Top speed, a brisk 1.4 miles per hour or 2.3 kilometers per hour. The 5600 is HCM's second largest excavator, with the first being the even mightier EX8000, which we've seen in Canada. Below the 5600 is the 3600, then the 2600, then 1200, which rounds out the lineup of mining excavators HCM manufactures. With the specs of the machine covered, let's check in with TJ up in the cab. Some of you astute observers might notice how quiet the cab is. Thanks to the multitude of sound suppression, operating the 5600 is as quiet as a Cadillac. However, you may have also noticed that even in massive machines like this one, the ride can still be a little bit bumpy.
quarry visit in Japan was quick, so we didn't have a chance to do a close up walk around. However, we have a ton of photos and video of other Hitachi mining excavators around the world so we can show you some of the finer details of these machines. The 5600 in Japan was configured as an excavator, but Hitachi's mining class excavators can also be configured as front shovels. The configuration depends on the mining company's preference and how the pit is set up. It's the same base shovel for our purposes, but the front end is flipped around to dig up and into a face rather than toward the machine. This bucket's capacity is 36 yards or 23.5 cubic meters, and it can load the trucks here in four to six passes. As a front shovel, the bucket splits in two hydraulically, allowing material to dump into the truck beds. A mountain of wear steel is within the bucket, which welders affix to the permanent bucket structure. This steel is softer and wears over time, protecting the extremely expensive bucket. Finally, we have the teeth, also known as GET or ground engaging tools. Choosing the right GET is critical for performance and can change based on the digging conditions. Similar to wear steel, maintenance crews can change these teeth as they wear, sometimes as often as weekly in hard rock. Since there are a few hundred pounds each, crews need a crane to make it happen. Next is the boom. These excavators feature six enormous hydraulic cylinders with two opening and closing the bucket, two running the stick, and two for the boom. And for a fun fact, each of these cylinders weighs more than two F-250 pickup trucks. Now, what the heck are these cones? They help the truck drivers line the bed up with the bucket as they back in. If the cones are inside the bed, they know they're in the right spot. A mighty machine needs a mighty undercarriage. Specifically, the 5600 has three rollers on top, seven on the bottom, and 39 track shoes in total. This gives the shovel a ground pressure of about 35 PSI, similar to a typical car. Behind the machine below the counterweight is the service center where technicians can refill all of the machine's fluids from one point. This is where they'll pump diesel, grease, hydraulic fluid, and anything else the machine needs every 12 hours based on usage. Once service is complete, the service center folds into the machine to prevent damage. And lastly, the red tanks on the back of the machine are for fire suppression. If a fire were to happen during operation, sensors throughout the machine would recognize where the fire is happening and flood the area, removing the threat before further damage can occur. And that's it for our time with Fujisako and Hitachi Construction Machinery in Japan. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel for so many more videos coming soon. We'll see you next time. Stay dirty.